Hey, this is George and MJ from the Raven Age, and you're watching Metal Master Kingdom. Where metal reigns. What is up? It's Alex from Metal Master Kingdom. We're at the Budweiser stage today for, without a doubt, one of the biggest tours of the year, Iron Maiden's Legacy of the Beast Tour. And uh, I have the great pleasure to be joined by the special guests of the Legacy of the Beast Tour, the Raven Age. We have George Harris. George? How you doing? You right? Good, man. And hey, singer hey. Matt James. Hey, Matt? hey. Good. So, so welcome, guys. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. George, I know this is your second time here, so so welcome back. Thank you very much. Yes, I, I saw you guys um, when you were play, played here last time on the cool. Book of Souls tour, and uh, Matt, I know it's your first time. It is my first time. So yeah, yeah. welcome. Thank you very much. Welcome. So so you're currently on, like I said, Legacy of the Beast tour. Without a doubt, the biggest tour of the summer has been going. It's been going really well. I mean, I don't think we can ask for it to go much better, really. Um, you know, we, we, what, what are we on there? How many shows is this? So 12, 12, 12, 12, 13, I think. 13, I think so we're like yeah. just, over, just over a quarter of the way through the tour now. Um, started down in Florida and kind of made our way up. And obviously, yeah, but, um, yeah so we had two back-to-back -back shows. We had double shows in Brooklyn, double shows here. But yeah, I mean, every, every show we've just kind of, you know, it usually takes you a few gigs to get into the swing of a tour in right. general. Kind of like number five or six is usually when we're all like, exactly. okay, we're, 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 you know, we're locking in now and yeah. just kind of enjoying it rather than the nerves mm -hmm. aren't quite so sort of uh, present. But yeah, I mean, we've, we've been having a brilliant time. Obviously, it's amazing to see like these places as well. And we've got a few days off here and there. Um, so traveling around the States and Canada has been, been awesome. Yeah, cool. So, of the places you've played so far on this tour, where do you think has been like the best reaction? Um, actually, Canada. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I, the the um, I mean, the first show we did in Montreal. 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 That was that was unbelievable. Like, yeah. it's the thing is like Montreal and um, you know, places like uh, Quebec. There's this real kind of European influence there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and. They just, you know, there's there is some things that the, the European audiences do that these guys were kind of doing, Absolutely. and that, that there's the kind of familiarity for me mm -hmm. as a frontman, and it's like not so much that it's a bad thing, but like the American audiences, for example, a lot of the time they like to observe and watch the show mm -hmm. uh, rather than be like a big, you know, integral part. They just want to kind of really watch it and take it all in, take in yeah. the spectacle, which is cool, it's like a different way of doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's sometimes hard, um, from, from my perspective as a front man, to gauge if, you know, are they, these guys really into this? You know, I don't, yeah. don't really know. Um, but, you know, most of the time they are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, uh, the fact is, you know, we've been doing really, really well, you know, merchandise over after the show. So, it's, mm -hmm. you know, people comment and say, oh, loving, loving the stuff, loving the show. So everyone's really digging it and enjoying it. It's just. It's a different kind of reaction, but yeah. as soon as we came to Canada, it's kind of like, oh, back to business as usual kind mm -hmm. of thing. These these crowds want to let you know that they they, they love listening to your stuff. Absolutely. It's not the same as all, like like Brooklyn, even though I was expecting Brooklyn to be hard, they were unreal. Yeah, really Philadelphia. Good, especially really, second night Brooklyn, yeah, it was really yeah. good. Philadelphia, unreal, some of the southern places, so... Um, Atlanta yeah. was pretty cool. Yeah. And Great to hear, great yeah. to hear. So, your album Conspiracy came out earlier this year. Fantastic album. We reviewed it, like I told you, and you released it on your own label, Corvid Records, right? Mm -hmm. Talk about how the formation of your own label came about. Well, we just kind of we were with a, our first album, Dance Will Rise, was uh, put out through BMG, and we kind of just decided that we we thought it was the way forward. Basically, it's like we kind of had everything we kind of do is very much in house. Like, obviously, like the writing and the artwork and we have like our old guitar player Dan is now our manager so we kind of have oh, everything it? yeah is um you kind of have everything coming from from us and we kind of thought you know why not just go for it ourselves and sort of cut out the middleman to, right. like, I guess to a certain point because um I feel like with the first album BMG was such a huge label mm -hmm. I feel like well, you know they had bigger fish to fry at the time which is obviously fair enough it's cool yeah. but we just thought, you know, why not? Why not kind of just set up our own thing, and at least we have like 
complete control over everything. We can really monitor what's working, what's not working. We like totally learnt from the first album, you know, the, the sort of mistakes we made or what you know where to sort of push more, like in terms of like the demographic and all that sort of thing. So, so it's just all it's quite interesting as well, just trying to figure out, you know, it's like problem solving really, you know, just yeah. trying to figure out who's into it and who's not. What do we need to try and concentrate on? And uh, yeah, as I said, like Dan's taken on the managerial role, and he was like super up for taking that on, which was other yeah. without him, we wouldn't have been able to do it. Right. Um, so yeah, it just kind of fell into place basically. Nice. So um, the songwriting I really feel is really high class, which is something that Thanks. I always <laughs> look for when I when I listen to new bands. One of the elements that always attracts me to new bands is the quality of the songwriting, and you guys have gotten it down to a T. So, very much. and that's why you guys. There's a couple other points of why you you guys are really incredible that I'll, I'll get to uh, in just a little bit. But uh, with the writing, is it a collaborative effort between all four, all five of you guys, or is it like a case of like there's a couple of guys that are the primary writers and everyone focuses on arrangement? Well, up until Conspiracy, it was that it was myself and Dan. Mm -hmm. We wrote the the EP and the and the album Dark Souls Rise, um, and then obviously Dan. Moving position, we got uh, Tony, our new guitar player, and MJ, obviously. So there's two new members to the band, and they, these guys are both songwriters as well. Mm -hmm. So there's four of us working on on the album instead of, of two. I mean, we had like we had a, a bit already kind of written and ready to roll, but it's just way more of a collaborative thing. Like obviously, MJ's vocals, his vocal range was totally different to our old singers. So. Some of the vocal melodies needed rearranging and to mm -hmm. kind of suit him and get the best out of his voice, right. um, which was really cool because it kind of meant you know there's a few doors opened in terms of writing melodies and that because you know we can kind of hit all these sky high notes and stuff. So I found out in the studio, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. but yeah, like it was just I feel like those two jumping on board with the writing and stuff has made the album a lot more dynamic because mm -hmm. I guess me and Dan have our kind of ways. Of writing, which you know right. it, it works and stuff, but it's just yeah, the more ideas, the better, and it's yep. yeah, I was like you know more more than happy to welcome these guys' ideas. But we're also quite you know we're not. I, I can't I can't speak from Tony's perspective, but from my perspective, I'm not. It's you know the way that George writes and the way that I write, it's not like a million miles away from each other, which is that was the most one of the most surprising things. Right. And we've done like a few things collaborative-wise, uh, literally from the from the ground up. Uh, there's just the, the ballad on um, on 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 the record uh, facing launch a thousand ship that really Great was song. like a a three way kind of working thing. Like George was playing the uh, the riff in the kitchen one day, mm -hmm. the guitar riff. Tony kind of did this little, little lead line, and I started just jamming some melodies over, and that was kind of the real first time we just kind of it was like a natural work together. Work work you know, you know it all came together very very quickly, and it was. Uh, yeah, it, was, it was really good, and we uh, we we worked on other songs together, like Forgotten World. That was another one. Yeah, um, and the like, same thing as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it's like same thing. You had a chorus. chorus. Tony had a pre-chorus, and I had this riff, and, and just kind of gelled them all together, and it was like, actually works. Yeah, it works. <laughs> Who'd have Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing that proves like that we're not like you know we're not so different as writers that we can't work together you know, and it works really nicely and I think it just, it's just going to kind of stand us in good stead for album number three. Mm -hmm. That sounds awesome. Um, like I said, the songs uh, on the album were like they've reached this like they have this epic quality like they sound big and anthemic and that's always one of the styles that, that always draws me in like you know Grey with Fireflies and uh, right. Betrayal of the Mind but Day of the World said still mm -hmm. quality stuff so, um, the the other thing that uh, also attracted me to you guys is something that I find a lot of modern bands tend to struggle to find these days is a sense of individuality. And right. hearing what you guys have done, you guys have been able to successfully blend the modern elements of metal, which I, I understand is your primary influence, mm -hmm. but I also hear some, uh, the, some of the classic metal elements in there. Yeah. You blended those in a really unique way. Yeah. So, and George, you've gone on record to say that, like I said, you've been influenced by bands like Azalea Dying, Killswitch Engage, Trivium. 
you know, yeah. bands of the 2000s. Yeah, but I yeah. do hear like a lot of the classic elements. Like, who would say who would maybe be like the most classic band that you guys are maybe influenced by? Um, I mean, I guess for me, like subconsciously, I must have been influenced by Maiden. <laughs> oh, because your dad, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. At some point, growing up, growing up with it, you know, just yeah. being around it all the time. Yeah, because the harmonies. Whatever. The harmonies, uh, you, you guys are very harmony heavy, especially yeah. in yeah. the guitar department and, and uh, Maiden being known for like their guitar harmonies. Yeah. I think that's kind of like the primary influence yeah. in there, but uh, are there any, any others? I'm really into bands like, uh, I really like Nightwish for instance, which are like, you know, I think get a lot of their sort of epic kind of... Yeah, very theatrical... Cool. Yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, slightly is that really? classical neo? What was it? It's like neo classical. Yeah, part of yeah, it, isn't it? Sometimes you know. So super, obviously, I'm super into like the modern metal, like yeah. the 2000 metalcore kind of thing. But yeah. melody has always been like the main thing. Like the reason I like those, you know, even like the real heavy stuff is like yeah. th there's still melody in the guitars exactly. and stuff, which is what drew me to it in the first place. So yeah. try and get the most out of that in our songs. And big fan of just you know big epic kind of music Absolutely. in general, Absolutely. like film score and stuff like that, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I feel like it's kind of just a blend of all of that in yeah. one, that's what we're trying to do. But the most amazing thing that you picked up on that kind of marriage between the class, because that's, that's genuinely what I think that we're doing well, yeah. I think, you know, we've kind of really, you know, like the, I've said a couple of times in interviews that, you know, the thing that you can do with that is the fact that there is this massive divide between generations in metal. Yeah. Uh, you've got the older generation who just don't want to listen to anything that the younger generation, well very rarely, yeah. and vice versa. Yeah. You know, the younger generation just think, oh that's just, you know, that's yeah. old how I just want to... Yeah. A lot of them are saying like, oh it's, it's old school so it's not cool anymore. Yeah, yeah, sort of yeah, anymore. yeah. exactly. <laughs> I mean again, there's always exceptions to that rule, but that's yeah. vastly how it's going. And exactly. I think because of what we're doing with the style of music, you know, musically there's, there's, there's obviously that very modern sound. I mean, with those, those classic elements, and I'm, I'm, I think, mainly a classic rock singer that wound up in a metal band, <laughs> right. uh, and uh, you know, it just kind of worked. And um, Deep Purple, like Deep Massive Deep Purple, and, and obviously Maiden, you know, uh, in the and um, the more classic metal bands as well, like Metallica and uh, you know Priest. Right. You know, like that's that's the stuff I grew up on. That's Absolutely. you know, I just you know, and obviously I was, I knew all the kill switches and the, yeah. and the bands of the day, like I'm, again I'm a big uh, Avenged fan, uh, I think Five Finger are a really good band as well uh, in that modern scene, but I just think those bands all have that balance between classic yeah. and modern stuff, that's what makes them so big I think, exactly. because they just it creates a huge uh, audience base, you know, where there's something there for everybody. That's right. Yeah. So, um, talk about how you came into the band, because I remember when I first heard that you guys parted ways with Mike. I thought some big shoes to fill, but hearing your work on the album and how you sing some of the old, the older songs, you're killing it, man. Oh, thank so you. talk about how you came into the band and what other bands have you been in. Um, well, I was in a band um, for a, quite a, quite a long time called Wild Lies, uh, and we had you know varying degrees of success, but it was uh, you know it all came to a rather tragic end, <laughs> uh, and um, I. It's weird because we talk about it all the time that the, the, all the things that had to happen, the stars really did align mm -hmm. for this to happen. I mean, we're talking about a matter of weeks either side. This never would have happened. Right. And it took. Uh, I, well, I think Wild Lies ended at the end of. I think it was 2017. Uh, we did our final tour, and we decided to call it a day. And I was very jaded with the music industry, I didn't really want to be involved in it in, a, in any creative way for a while. Right. But even after a few months I started getting the itch again, you know, and uh, I was kind of missing it. And I remember having a chat with Jai, uh, mainly at first it was a, a pure curiosity thing, because I heard that Mike wasn't in the band anymore, so I just kind of wanted to touch base and see, you know, put my feelers out and see what happened and, you know, just kind of I knew the guys as well before we'd done shows uh, previously, so uh, that was cool. And then the other thing was we shared the same producer, okay. uh, a guy called Matt Hyde, and I was a bit umming and ahhing about whether to go for the audition because I just was, I was so different, and I was right. thinking they're just not going to like me anyway. Right. It'd be pointless. Uh, but I spoke to Matt Hyde and uh, the producer, and he was like, "No, dude, this is like 
this has to happen. He said, this is so weird that this has happened because if somebody already asked me if I could take one band or take one stick and put them together, it would be you guys. So he said, basically, you've got to do this. And he kind of set it all up, didn't he? He got into contact with you and... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He kind of said the same thing. He didn't yeah. lay it on a stick, obviously. I don't think he wanted to... You didn't want to give know. too much yeah, away. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Matt, you, yeah. it'd be a, be a great... He, he kind of just... You know, saying your praises and he's worked worked with you in the studio. He, he thinks you, you know, one of the one of the best guys he's working in terms of pitching and timing and all that sort of stuff. And I was like, well, sounds good. Sounds like it's going to save me a load of time in the studio. So <laughs> let's get him in. <laughs> I don't know if it did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did. Believe me, he but, did. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, nice. But yeah, and then it all came down, and we had the first audition, and it was literally, it was like, what, what's, what's the harm in it could do? We could just have a jam. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I remember we, I learned a couple of their songs from Darkness Will Rise and we uh, went in and had a jam and it just, it just, it just felt great. I mean, it was like literally from the second time we were playing it, it was like, I've been playing with these guys for years all of a sudden, you know, it was right. so natural and so easy and, you know, George wasn't giving anything away the whole time we were there, he was just like poker face the whole time. Like, right, yeah. I was like, oh, you probably hate it. And, uh, <laughs> but the other guys were actually seeming really, really you know, enthused, so it was good. And then I just, that was it, we had a beer, and then I went home. Next day I got a call from, from, from the, the manager, Dan, and he basically said, we'd like you to come and be a part of the, the Raven Age family. And I was like, yeah, that'd be brilliant. <laughs> awesome. And then it all went from there. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. It's awesome to hear. Um, George, you, you probably, we probably touched on this already, but seeing, growing up uh, with uh, your dad being on the road and everything, was seeing him play something that really inspired you to pick up a guitar and start playing and being in a band? I mean, I never really thought that I was going to be doing, you know, music sort of full time. Right. It wasn't like, a, when I was younger, I was just totally into football. All I wanted to do was play football. And, you know, as most young kids, I wanted to be a professional footballer and right. do this and do that. So music was something I was just I was into. And I played the guitar and I loved music. but. Um, I kind of never really had that aspiration from from a young age. Some I don't know why. I guess the football thing probably just took over, and I was like, I want to do that. Right. But uh, yeah, it wasn't until I was about seventeen. Um, funnily enough, I was actually playing football. I went to on trials for a, a, t a team in Norway, and I was kind of like last chance stab at it kind of thing. And uh, I knew I was going to be there for like a couple of months, so I took my guitar with me and my laptop, and I was just like, you know, I had so much spare time. Mm -hmm. I was just kind of jamming away. Right, and I ended up writing a load of stuff, and I was like, you know what, I'm actually quite into this music. This like, music it, thing. Yeah, it's music. This music thing. rubbish. It's, it's <laughs> like, um, but yeah, and then I guess, I don't know, being seeing you know, what, what is possible in the music industry, having grown up around it and seeing, right. I mean, that just, you know, just made, made it seem like a million, million miles away, the, the, the thought of actually getting to, to that point. Um, well, you know, I thought... I got back from that that football trip, and then I met Dan pretty much straight away after I came back from there. And then he's a, he was a guitarist, writer as well. He started jamming, and it kind of all snowballed from there. Um, I think I don't know. I think subconsciously I must have taken a lot in with with seeing the whole industry thing, like right. from a young age, and just to kind of Dad's always relayed the same kind of message to me, just about like work ethic and. You know, telling me how they started and how how much he used to do for the band and how how tough it was. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't just it wasn't just like go boom right from day one. They had to work hard it really yeah. hard it for three or four years before they got signed. And yeah. so that kind of relayed in my mind and tried to sort of use that for the Raven Age. Nice. Um, and I know um, your dad has uh, taken uh, you and your siblings out on the road a bunch of times, right? Yeah, so yeah. When, when was the first time that he started uh, taking you guys out on the road uh, on with the Maiden Camp? What, in terms of the band or the family? Family, pretty family, much, because I know family. that's how it started, right? Oh, yeah, I mean, from young, young age, I mean, I can't, I can't, oh, I don't, it's so funny, it's funny, because, like, he gets annoyed with us, because I'm like, oh, yeah, I've never been to that place, I'm looking forward to going, he's like, you have been there, <laughs> you've been there three or four <laughs> times, but you were, like, two, yeah. or something, so I just never remember it, um, mm. Happened quite happened on this tour actually. I was like, oh, um, 
Quebec City as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was, I was like, oh, I've never been there. This is lovely. Yeah. This is really you've nice. He's like, you've been here. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we've been, we've, you know, we, we used to tour a lot more when we were younger, actually. Right. Um, yeah. you know, we did a couple of trips, like, in our school holidays when I was, like, 12, 13, around the States. We did a similar sort of thing. I got, like, a, an RV and was going around with the RV parks and absolutely loved it. Some of my favourite holidays. Nice. Cool. Um, you probably hear this quite a bit, but uh, when you hear people refer to the Raven Age as Steve Harris's son's band, does it bother you? No, it doesn't bother me. I mean, it, it is. That is a fact. Yeah, and, uh, a fact. You know, we're never, never going to try and... I don't know, I think, I feel like if we try to, like, keep it under wraps and steer clear of it, it become, might even become more of a thing, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't care about what people say or think, which right. is... I just think if if I got caught up on what people say, if I started reading through comments online and people and yeah. taking them in, I'd never like, get out of bed. I would, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I would never get out of bed, and yeah. we'd never do anything. And then I feel I feel like stuff like that. If you let it sort of take over your mindset, then you start writing in a certain way because you want to try and you know stay. Oh, away. we need to be further yeah. away, away from, from sounding Maiden, like yeah. Maiden, or right, we need right. to sound like yeah. them so people like it. Or yeah. Yeah. do you know what I mean? So I just don't let any of that get in the way with what we do. It's just yeah. like. This is what I enjoy doing. Yeah. This is how I want, you know, the band to sound yeah. and blah blah blah, and kind of just go from there. You know, yeah. what I, mean? I think the thing that's also relatable for me is the fact that someone like George's dad and Maiden, they've mm. always done things unapologetically. Unapologetically, Absolutely. they they do things the way they want to do them, and that's that's literally what we do as well. Yeah. Like with with George, we do what we enjoy doing. Absolutely. You know, that's the reason we're here. Mm. And the fact is, you know, I've said this before, the reason we, we got given the opportunity to tour with Maiden last year in Europe, and touring, supporting Iron Maiden is probably one of the hardest support gigs in the industry. Yeah, yeah. Maiden fans are the most loyal, brilliant fans yeah. out there, and they, they, they die hard for Maiden. So Absolutely. we know, we're not, you know, delusional, we know we are to most people a massive inconvenience. Everyone yeah. is. Every right. support band is a massive inconvenience. They're here for Maiden. Yeah. But what, what what we're trying to do is go out and do our show regardless and try and turn and we see it, I see it every night. Mm -hmm. I see especially the front, I see people that start off like this, but by the end they're they're jumping in there because the music is relatable. Yep. It really is. And we do it the way we want to do it. Yep. And you know, if people like it, great. If they don't like it, that's okay as well. You know, we don't mind, but we are doing our own thing. Yep. Regardless of the main connection, we are doing completely our own thing. Thank you. Um, so just one last question to wrap things up. As far as the future is concerned, you guys have a, have a bunch more dates, like about three quarters more for this Legacy of the Beast tour, then you're going to South America, Yeah. and uh, then later in the year you're going to Europe uh, with Alter Bridge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, can we maybe expect to see you guys back here at some point doing some headline shows? That is kind of what we've been discussing. I mean, we we really would like to come back and try and capitalise on, you know, on the reach we've had on, on this tour and stuff. And um, another thing is, you know, utilise our visas and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> All that sort of stuff comes into play as well. But, I mean, yeah, we've got, so we're going to be pretty much touring until till Christmas. Mm -hmm. We get back from this after the South American leg and we have like three weeks off. And then we go out on tour for a month with Autobridge and Shinedowns, which is going to be unbelievable. And we've got one headline show at the end of uh, the year. At the Dome in London? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's just like to wrap the year off kind of right. thing. Special occasion as well. It's, yeah. it's, it's a different kind of show than what people have seen on the last headline run. Even yeah, still, we didn't just want to do the same thing yeah. again on another London yeah. headline we show. To make it a same big... album, so we're doing something a bit different for this yeah. one. It should be pretty cool. But, yeah, I mean, we, we definitely would like to get back here. I mean... Like North America in general, like I can't remember if you said this already, but like if you look at like stats and stuff, like from Spotify, who's listening, where are they from, and all that, yeah. I think like almost a third of our listeners are from North America. Mm -hmm. So I guess you know some people seem to be getting it, mm -hmm. and I guess this tour is just going to help enforce that a bit more. So we we really do want to try and get back here yeah. next year at some point. Obviously, we we need to start working on album number three as well. So to see what coincides. Mm -hmm. uh, they coincide basically, yeah. So writing for the third album hasn't begun yet. No, yeah, it has it has. We kind of we all do our own thing at home. We get together. We've been jamming some stuff. Um, there's loads of content flying around. Obviously, like who knows what's going to end up being 
yeah. of those tracks yet. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff yet to be written. But yeah, we, we always kind of write. We, know that we don't really just stop writing. Stop and go, yeah. oh, okay, that's that's out done. done and relax. We actually yeah. enjoy it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's part of, well, it's, you know, yeah. probably the most fun thing about being in a band is yeah. like Create, getting that creative creating the music, yeah. buzz. Yeah, when you're excited about something, there's nothing, nothing better. So yeah, we've, we've, we've been doing it since, you know, since uh, Conspiracy came out. Awesome to hear. Well, thank you guys. Yeah, thank it's you. Been awesome to talk. No worries, thank you. So, uh, have good. a great show tonight. Sorry I can't be here tonight. No but like I said, I saw you guys last night and uh, you guys were amazing. Oh, thank and you. And I, I look forward to seeing you guys again. Okay. Whenever you return either headlining or supporting someone, yeah. I'll be there. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, do you have any closing words to the fine people watching? Yeah, thanks for having us. Uh, this is George and Matt from The Raven Age. We're super excited to be here in Toronto for night number two at Budweiser. Uh, thanks for checking it out. Okay. So, people, come check out the Legacy of the Beast tour featuring Iron Maiden and these fine lads, the Raven Age, one of the best up and coming bands. Buy the album Conspiracy, it's out now, and also the previous album, Darkness Will Rise. Catch them on tour with Maiden and Alter Bridge later this year. You will not be disappointed. I'm Alex, thanks for watching. See you next time.